I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against all forms of tyranny over the mind of man. Thomas Jefferson wrote that in 1800. He also wrote in the Declaration of Independence, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. Now I live in one of the few remaining counties in the United States of America that has no building codes. And up until very recently, we also had no zoning or any land use codes. All that has recently changed beginning in 2018 with a master plan for the county. They developed a land use code by cobbling together bits and pieces of legislation from other jurisdictions into a mess of a document that referenced sections that didn't exist and was just thrown together without good organization or foresight. And it was put together during the height of the pandemic in 2020. The meetings were not open to the public and they were not televised on Zoom or accessible by the public in any means. So there was no representation of the public voice in building this ridiculous code. They have since put together uh, about 57 additional pages to the document, revising some of those issues and adding more code and also changing the fundamental intent of the language, which reserved for property owners by right most of the things that you would ever want to do and converted all of that to now by permit. So they have taken one of the last vestiges of freedom and turned it into a jurisdiction where you must ask the permission of the government to do anything on your own land. A lot of folks are going to have a hard time sympathizing with our plight over here because they've been living under such restrictive codes their entire lives. But that's not true everywhere. The city of Houston, Texas, for example, has no zoning whatsoever. We still have no building code and no building department in this county, which subsequently makes this a mecca for natural alternative building. You have structures of slip form straw, straw bale, earth bag, rammed earth, cordwood, like you see behind me, and it's a hotbed of innovation in these techniques that reduce cost and reduce the pressure on homeowners in creating a home for themselves and their family without having to get a mortgage with a bank. In the history of Delta County, there have been a few moments where the lack of such use in zoning regulations has caused some conflict, notably between miners mining coal and farmers and the effects of the mining operations on irrigation ditches. And to this day, there are still ditch riders in this county that never go out to check the ditches without a sidearm because conflicts have gotten pretty hot in the past. But aside from that, there really haven't been many issues. The county commissioners that are bullish on getting this code installed claim that, oh, well, you know, we've got an issue with people living in their RVs for extended periods of time and just dumping sewage right on the ground, which I find a little absurd. I mean, if you've ever been next to a pile of human waste for very long, you're not going to carry on with that sort of behavior. And in point of fact, there are already health codes that govern that sort of thing, which could be used to address that sort of a problem. So. There is no strong case for a land use code in this county, with the exception of where heavy industry impacts the lives of the people who live here. Now, the problem with instituting such codes is that you're outsourcing responsibility of neighborly relations. If you've got an issue with something that your neighbor is doing, the proper thing to do is to approach them and let them know what your concern is and give them the opportunity to come up with a remedy. 
and ameliorate your problem. In the case of some friends of mine who run a composting business, they had an issue like this where, you know, they're pretty remote and not bothering anybody, but they had a particularly hot load of chicken manure that they were composting, and the weather conditions were such that that smell was wafting onto the neighbor's place downhill from them. And so he approached them and said, hey, it smells like chicken shit down at my place. Can you do anything about that? And they said, oh, yeah, sure. And they moved where they were composting and adjusted their operations so it wouldn't bother him anymore. And that's what happens when you don't outsource responsibility for these things to the coercive arm of the state. Now, if you have a zoning land use department in a situation like that, the easy thing for that neighbor to do would be to call up some enforcer to come over and make my friend sad and issue a fine. And now they hate their neighbor and their neighbor hates them. And, you know, the conflict in the situation is only escalated by not taking personal responsibility for dealing with those issues amongst each other. The other problem with creating a land use planning commission is that you're putting into place the architecture that will end up being the boot on your neck in the future. Even if the code in question is fair and reasonable and common sense and whatever else it may be, Let's not forget that when the federal income tax was instituted in the United States of America, it was sold to the voter as a 1% tax only on the top 1% of earners. And now at this point, we're all paying about 35% of our income in tax and a total of 50% or greater when you include other taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, vehicle registrations, licensing fees, so that in essence, we are all 50% slaves to the state. Anytime you create a new department like this and establish a new code, you're concentrating power in the hands of the kind of control perverts who would seek out a job like code enforcer. These are unelected positions and the property owner has precious little recourse against their edicts. In this new code that has been drawn up for our county, there's a fine schedule that could mean that if there's something the code enforcer does not like, he can slap a fine on you of $1,000 a day. And if you don't pay, after a certain period of time, they'll just confiscate your property. Now, the bottom line is, if you have to ask permission to do anything, you are not free. I have personal experience with code compliance issues trying to build other homesteads. We had 40 acres outside of Conifer, Colorado at one point, and our plan was to build a small earth bag house. And at the time, it would have cost me around $10,000 to build this house. Not only was the county extremely difficult to deal with, but there was a fire marshal whose approval I had to get before I could be issued a building permit. Now, this guy was legislating from the seat of his truck. Whatever rules he decided to make up, that's the way it had to be, or you weren't getting your building permit, and there was absolutely no recourse against his judgment. Now bear in mind, we're talking about a dirt building with a sod roof. And he insisted that we install a 10,000 gallon fire cistern, the hole for which we had to bring in a blasting crew to excavate. And even with that, he insisted we put a sprinkler system in a house that could not possibly burn. And there was nothing we could do about it. We ended up selling that property eventually and moving on to other things and that experience was part of what brought us to this county where there were no building codes and we wouldn't have to answer to dipshits like that the guy who rewrote the code from what was approved in 2021 is a fellow who was in the planning sphere in monterey county california and then he retired over here and they hired him to run this department. And he allegedly has said that it is his absolute intention to regulate everything over an inch off the ground in the entirety of the county. 
And so he's bringing a mentality from the state of California, the county of Monterey, to the Wild West out here and has absolutely no understanding or sensitivity to what's important to the people of this community. The thing about allowing the county to have a say in how we use our land out here is that that is the first step to opening us up to all manner of tyranny. If we look to Holland right now, we can see that 3,000 Dutch families are having their farms confiscated after generations of use and ownership to appease an EU regulation if we allow there to be a government body that has the sort of power to tell you how you might use your land. It is only a matter of time until the creep of bureaucracy will make it impossible to do anything. Now in this valley, we have a lot of regenerative agriculture, organic growers, and we have to innovate in order to be able to survive. Because there's no subsidy for the product that we produce, whereas there is a subsidy for the commercially conventionally grown GMO crops and large-scale agriculture, we have to be creative about how we run our farms in order to make a profit. And a lot of times that involves unpaid interns who want to learn the techniques that we use. What we offer to them in exchange for their time is not only the education, but also a place to stay and some food to eat. Well, these land use regulations would govern how many domiciles we could have on our place and how we could house our farm help would also put great restrictions on whether or not we can participate in agro-tourism by having camping sites or you know, some smaller cottages and things like that that we could rent out to people who wanna come experience the lifestyle that we enjoy and, and see how the food is produced. So it really puts a, a crimp on what we're able to accomplish. In many ways, this area is the last vestige of the Wild West. It is the last stand for freedom. So there are few places in the developed world where you can just do what makes sense to you and what is right in your assessment. Freedom is a precious thing, and it's just about been snuffed out in the world. There is absolutely a cadre of powerful and well-financed individuals who want to corral all human action under the umbrella of a technocratic socialist world government. And if we lose to that ideology, then the world's population will be plunged into a thousand years of darkness. If we can stand here and resist this sort of tyranny, then we have a chance of being a free humanity once again. Now, at this point in this conflict, we are in the political phase where different approaches are being implemented to fight back against this land use code. One nice thing is that this is a county of only 30,000 people. And in the last presidential election, only 3,100 people voted. So largely we are non-participators in the political process, if you will, which means there's a great untapped voting block. And from my informal survey of my neighbors and folks in the community, no one wants this code. And that means we could mobilize a large block of people to vote out the current commissioners and reorganize the entire system. Short of that, there are efforts being made to uh, get the 2021 code thrown out and start from scratch, hopefully with something more reasonable. Myself, I'm an abolitionist. I don't think the department should exist at all. And I think we should find other ways to solve whatever minor problems there may be. But the bottom line is that this is absolutely not in the interest of the people and without the consent of the governed. It is therefore our right and our duty to alter or abolish the form of government that is enacting tyranny 
over the minds of the men and women of this valley. Freedom and liberty must be defended by individuals. We cannot relegate the security of our freedom to these governments instituted among men. That's a personal responsibility. And I know that my neighbors and the folks I know in this valley are quite able and quite willing to defend our freedom. I'll keep you guys posted with developments on this issue as we go along. We've got a meeting coming up here at the end of the month where in a large hall we will be able to petition the government for a redress of our grievances, if you will. And there could be some change after that. But as it stands right now, the county government is in opposition to the will of the people within the county. And I, for one, am not in a position where I'm willing to allow that to stand. Like Thomas Jefferson, I've sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against all forms of tyranny over the mind of man.